Greetings, beloved relatives. It has been a hard road for the people of the archipelago called Jamaica since 1494, when the criminal Christopher, Christopher Columbus set his foot up on our shores. From the day the colonizers arrived, we have been fighting for our rights to be recognized by them. Nonetheless, the colonizers managed to use skillful manipulation to make the people of Jamaica hate each other and seek to keep away and seek to keep each other from free exercise of creator given rights. Intense hatred and pain is felt by many Jamaican relatives concerning the Maroons. For things the colonizers taught the people, we did. And where many of our Jamaican relatives have shown support in this uncertain time, many have lashed out on us. And some, much to our great sadness, has called for our blood. We understand what pain feels like. 135 years of war against both sets of colonizers caused our ancestors great pain. Pain we feel in this time. All of us were hurt in a time of invasion and occupation. All of us were affected. And the tactics of the colonizers were designed to attack the mind, the heart, and separate brother from brother and sister from sister to keep us weak. We cannot keep living this way. We cannot hold on to hatred. It's time to let go of deep psychological pain. We cannot let this disruption in our rich history hold us back forever. The ancestors had called for peace. The people have called for peace. The people have called for peace. My heart yearns for peace. People of Jamaica, I'm tired of us being divided as we cannot get the justice and freedom that we're rightfully owed while confined in our hatred. People of Jamaica, I love you. The Maroons love you. We are relatives and we are with you. We will not allow mistakes of the past to blight our potential for growth. People of Jamaica, let us put the past behind us. People of Jamaica, our ancestors made peace with the British. Now I ask that we make peace in sight of the Creator forever. People of Jamaica, the Maroon relatives love you. Greetings, relatives. First, allow me to say thank you for the overwhelming support that you all have given me in the struggle so far. And we hope that you all continue to help us carry it to the highest height, as this is not the Maroons alone, but for all peoples of the archipelago, now called Jamaica, who know themselves to be indigenous. I'm asking you today, once again, to lend me your ears that I might inform you of something that should have long been said. But as is always said, there's no time like present. Many people may be asking the question, why is the cockpit country so important to the Maroons? Well, let me tell you. Why are we so serious? And why are we so vehement about securing the cockpit country? It's not because of how beautiful it is. It's not just because of all the water and trees and other bountiful resources it contains. It is not because it is the lungs of the archipelago, much as how the Amazon is the lung of the world, but rather it is because our ancestors are buried there. It is because the spirits of nature that our ancestors revered since prehistoric times have still remained here. It's because the cockpit country is a sacred site, comprised of many sacred locations, many of them considered as holy as any church, 
It is because the same spirits of nature that our ancestors respected and revered who lived there before us helped us in our greatest time of need to fight against the tyranny of colonization. And it is because it is our home. We still live here. As descendants of the first people, we follow the spiritual lease of, four, of our four parents. We believe that every rock, tree, spring, and every grain of soil is sacred and has a soul and feels just as we feel and is conscious much in the same way that we are conscious. Therefore, on behalf of the Maroons of cockpit country and all indigenous people of Jamaica, I hereby declare the cockpit country holy land as it was in prehistoric times for our ancestors so it must remain. It is our Mecca. It is our Wailing Wall. It is our Vatican City. It is our inheritance granted to us by the Creator. And we consider any destruction of that place by any entity to be an affront to the Creator and an infringement on our religious and spiritual rights as human beings, and in particular, indigenous people. Please respect the religious rights of my people and leave the cockpit country to its rightful custodians, the indigenous Maroons of Jamaica. Thank you. Greetings, beloved people. This is Chief Richard Curry from the cockpit country. I send my regards from the cockpit country, Jamaica's largest forest reserve and home of the indigenous Maroons of cockpit country. First, let me congratulate all the family and supporters of Marcus Garvey for keeping his memory alive and keeping true to his legacy and his, his ideals. It is important that I acknowledge Marcus Garvey's struggle just as how he acknowledged and recognized the struggles of others. Bigger than this, oral history tells us Garvey was himself a Maroon descendant. His mother being from Scotsall, known traditionally as Cushetown, from what I understand. It is important that we stand with each other together in this time of great division and great oppression. It is important that we are the rock, a firm foundation for each other in this time of great need. We understand that there may be differences between us, but it is always personal differences that have gotten in the way of victory and development of indigenous people since the very beginning of colonial enterprise. If people could learn to put aside personal differences and feelings for the overall good, then I believe that we will see the world that we are struggling for, a world in which everyone is giving their fair due, a world in which everyone is, re is respected, a world in which everyone is free. It is said that doing the same thing over and over again while seeking a different result is a mark of insanity. Therefore, let us show the world that is indigenous people, we are intelligent and level-headed and can be peacefully united for the common good. Let us show our ancestors that we recognize their sacrifice and that we appreciate what they have done to get us here. They have already done, the, done their part. It is up to us now to build on what they've left behind. It is with great respect and pleasure that I say the Maroons of Cockpit Country stand with you all and support your struggle for the recognition of your rights and your development. And we hope that you will stand in solidarity with us as we are in the same struggle that you are against oppression, tyranny, and underdevelopment. Let us peacefully build and develop our institutions. Let us recognize our structures of self-governance and let us, as Kranich said, simply act in a sovereign capacity. Blessed love.